So I'm going to go go to the course dashboard and navigate to my demo course. Uh, OK, we will be going over to assignments first. I'm going to go to modules. And in case you didn't know, modules is where you curate the uh, the, the flow of your course and where all where students will navigate to to access all your um, activities. So what I'm going to do is just create a new module to to uh, um, store my demo examples at the top. I'm going to click the pencil icon. Um, we are in module view, and this is how I recommend you build all your activities. Uh, you click the plus icon next to the name of the module to uh, open up this pop-up menu, and you can select the activity you would like to build, like assignments, quizzes, um, and discussions. So I'm going to create an assignment, and I can either choose an already existing assignment that I've created here, or I can create one from scratch. I will create one from scratch and name it, then add item. All right. Uh, next, I will create a discussion from scratch. So discussion, I can select here or create one from uh, scratch. Name it the title of the, the discussion topic that you're discussing. So I can say, just webinar demo, demo discussion. And then add item. So that's one way to create these activities. Um, the other way is to access or create them from their indexes. So I can go to assignments. And then I can create, create plus assignment. And uh, edit it here. Name it. Write your discussion prompt here. Um, and customize the settings. I can also go to discussions. And this will list all of your active discussions that are in this course, and then click plus, the plus icon, and then customize your settings from here. So these are the two indexes for these two um, activities. Um, and just like quizzes eh, as well, they, they store all the um, active and graded activities. But what makes the, the assignments act, um, index different is it stores all graded activities, regardless whether they, whether they are the assignment activity, a discussion, or a quiz. They are all stored here if they are marked to be graded. Uh, so that can be a little confusing. Um, you, you would also customize your gradebook um, and organize it through the assignments uh, index, which I will not get into, but that's just something to remember. Uh, I'm going to go back to modules. Well, whenever you create an assignment or discussion or any activity from scratch from the modules view, it will just create an empty blank activity. So we'll go to the assignment um, demo activity. It's completely blank. To begin editing it, you click edit. And then you can customize the name. You can write your instructions. Customize the points. Um, the assignment group is the same, the equivalent of the assignment or grade categories in Moodle. Uh, so you can organize these um, uh, however you'd like. I could say these are demo examples. And I can create a new group. I can choose how the grade is uh, displayed based on percentages, points, complete or incomplete, and so on, or just not graded at all. Next, you can customize how students uh, submit or complete this activity. You can um, have it to be just no submission. So no submission creates an assignment activity within your gradebook, but students don't interact with it within Canvas. Um, it can be, you can, you can choose how this students are graded um, some other way, whether it's externally in real life or in another um, uh, tool. Next, you can choose to be online or on paper. On paper just means uh, that students submit the physical paper to you in person. Uh, next, well, online is the most popular one for online uh, courses. And then you can choose a different type of um, submissions that students can submit. You can, they can do text entry, which means they are provided a text box to write and edit their content uh, directly in the browser. They can um, 
you could have them send you a link to a website, um, have media recordings, which I would encourage you to stay away from because your, your Canvas course has limited storage. So you might wanna keep away from this. Um, and then student annotation, but the most popular one is file uploads which means they can um, submit any kind of file, Word document, PDF, um, PowerPoint, um, whatever, whatever you require. And then next you can customize how um, many attempts they can submit, um, like a certain number or just unlimited. I, d I think unlimited by default is fine. Uh, say that they, they, they caught a spelling mistake and they wanna resubmit um, before the due date, that's perfectly fine. Um, it doesn't matter how many times they submit, once that um, the due date is closed and the activity is closed, they can no longer submit. Next, you can mark it as a group assignment. Um, choose to assign individual grade or grades to each student individually or as a group. And then select the, um, the group that you would like to use. So here I've already created a, a discussion group uh, group, but you can choose to be like project one group uh, or whatever discussion topic that they're, or not discussion, research topic they're working on um, and create one from scratch here within the activity by naming it um, and then choosing what, how uh, students can are organized into groups. You can choose them to uh, sign, up them, sign, sign up for themselves or automate this, um, or let Canvas automate. By allowing self sign it, sign up, you can um, limit the number amount of members per group and how many groups. I recommend just creating groups um, down here within the activity, so you can either create groups after you create the assignment. Oh, someone's here. Um, you can split the students by a certain number of groups, like how many groups you want to create or how many students you want in each group. Let's create um, create two groups. Uh, you can set a student leader, and the student the, the group the group student leader um, they are in charge and can manage the settings of the discussion and customize uh, the different the the enrolled users or in their group. So let's just do automatically assign group leader, and then either first student to join the group or a random student. All right, and then save. Oops, sample group. We're gonna let it sit for a second while it loads. There we go, groups have been created. Um, you, can, you can require peer reviews. Um, you can have students uh, give feedback and have anonymous grading. And then down here, this is a universal, um, every activity has a various dates that you can apply. Um, you can choose who you're assigning these dates to. Um, we have the due date, let's say it's due tomorrow. Uh, and then the, the default oh my, uh, is 11.59 PM. I always recommend that all my instructors have their activity due dates due at Sunday at, at midnight or 11.59 PM. Um, and having that the same due date for every week. So it's always Sunday at 11.59. You can choose how early this activity is open, how many, uh, how early students can begin submitting to, and then how late they can um, submit. So even if they, if they submit late, um, it will be marked as late, but then you can choose how many days late they can submit. So I can say it can, it's, they're allowed to submit three days late. Yeah. Um, down here, we can add another due date. This is what you will do if you want, to, if you have a student that needs accommodations, like an extended due date. Okay, so you come down here and say, I will give them an extra three days to complete this project for just this user and keep those same available. And then they can submit three days late. There we go. Um, and then save. Uh, down here, you can create a rubric for this assignment. You will just name it 
and customize the criteria points here. I do believe we have a uh, webinar specifically for creating rubrics, so I won't go into detail here, but this is where you would go to create the rubric for this specific assignment. Going back to modules, and don't forget when you are done to publish that activity. Uh, right now it's published, but because the module is not published, students cannot see it. Uh, but if you if you send the student the link, they can access this activity, but they cannot access this activity through modules view because the, this module is hidden. Um, next, we have our discussion. And then right now it's the um, the title of your, the discussion that you created is the, the title of the um, discussion post. To publish, you come here to bookmark and then the three dot icon to edit. Um, you can edit for this discuss specific discussion thread. Customize the name, write your prompt here. and post to specific sections, attach a file, um, choose how anonymous the discussion is, um, enable uh, whether, you, um, where, whether users can post uh, before seeing the replies. Um, the Canvas discussion is a lot simpler than Moodle, the Moodle forum types. There was like, I think seven different forum types in Canvas, there's only one um, discussion type with the specific settings that you can customize. So this is equivalent to the Q&A form in Moodle. By default, discussions are not set to be graded. So if you would like it to be graded, you click here and then customize the points. Um, and then if it's marked as a, as a group discussion, if you are using uh, small groups. So here I can select from my existing groups. Here's that example group that I created with through the assignment activity. Uh, and then the discussion groups here um, that I created previously. I will not make this a group discussion, but I will show you what that looks like. Uh, and then same same due date settings for as the um, assignment, all the, all the other activities. So click save. There's our discussion. So um, we go to our discussions in general. These are all discussions that are created in the course. Uh, I'm going to, and then you can view your separate uh, groups that you created through the people tab. Um, something to remember if you are using groups in Canvas, you want to have this menu item visible to students so they can uh, view and manage their uh, groups. So here we have all the students, or fake students that are enrolled in my course. Here, and then these tabs up here are various groups that have been created. To create new groups, you can click group set. And these are the same settings that um, I, I went over earlier. Uh, so this here, the student group, these are uh, student groups that students have created for themselves. Uh, say they are managing uh, projects and uh, research independently of you. So they are managing their own groups here. Here's an example discussion group that I created. So I said three different, I wanted uh, three separate groups and with automatically randomly assigned student leaders. You can tell who the student leader with, is with the, the, the head icon. And you can uh, reorganize your students by dragging and dropping, dropping them. Um, and then this, this will pop up to make sure you're doing, you, you know what you're doing um, here. All right, and then here's that example group that I created, I just showed you through that assignment activity. Two groups um, and it auto uh, assigned everyone to the best visibility. Um, so groups in Canvas is a little bit confusing. Uh, I'm gonna show you with, with my admin privileges how in students navigate groups. So I'm gonna click the student, I'm gonna act as them. So I'm now logging in as a student just to show you what this looks like. So this is what the course looks like as a student. Um, to access their discussions or any groups activities that they are working on, they can go to modules. We're gonna go to that um, this module here. We're gonna go to this discussion. 
uh, you might miss it, but over here, it's now navigated uh, the student's global navigation menu. We have now gone to groups. Um, it's a bit weird. It's with with group, any kind of group you create, it creates like a, it displays a bit like a, its own course options. You can have um, a home page, announcements for your group, content pages, um, see who's enrolled in your group like this, um, view all discussion topics. So here we have um, the instructor created discussion group that we are working on, that we're, we are uh, navigating through. And then we have a student created discussion group for this specific group. And then we have all files that have been uploaded to um, uh, this group. If, if you had um, for the group assignment, if a, a st one student can submit to that like one file to that assignment activity, their submission file will be displayed here as well for that assignment activity. And then big blue button is where they can use to have video conferences. I'm gonna stop acting as user. Uh, it navigates you away from this. It's, kind of, it's very confusing, but if, in order to get back to your class, just keep on going up here to your breadcrumb trail to navigate back. To look at all your group um, uh, activity, that's the group activity for students, you would open that group discussion. Oop, this is not the right. Down here, here's that active group discussion. Click on the, that discussion um, and then click this group icon to view the various activities for each group. So you can um, scroll through here. You can look at their announcements that they have and act, um, all the activity that they have um, been doing. And you can navigate through their various groups like this and to monitor that everything is going well. Um, to navigate back, just keep on clicking that, that breadcrumb shell. All right. Oh my gosh. One minute to spare. Are there questions? <laughs> um, okay. That was a lot of information. <laughs> um, I know it's, it's a lot. Uh, just remember, we'll, we'll send you that email with the tip sheet and hopefully you can start playing around and seeing what's possible with, Can with Canvas. Um, Groups are a bit complicated in Canvas, but I do think that you can do a lot more with them in Canvas and in Moodle.